Let's go. Yes, yes, y'all. From the Dave Campbell's Texas Football Mothership here in beautiful Louisville, Texas, it is Texas Football Today, a show on the internet. My name is Greg Tupper. I am the managing editor of Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine, texasfootball.com, a corresponding website. Thank you for spending part of your day with us. Whether you're watching us live at texasfootball.com or on Facebook, or you're listening to us on the podcast, which you can subscribe to on the podcast vendor of your choice. Either way, thank you for doing your part to support your local mediocre internet show i'm sitting here sitting over there at the helm today soon to take over the show like soon to just like grab the reins of this show it's the duchess of the dorks is ashley pickle hello ashley howdy uh are you excited about this i'm very excited yeah i enjoyed watching the movie so i'm excited to we talk are about not alone movie. in the studio we are not though. ready uh, bam Boom. not only are we joined as usual by <laughs> ishmael jonathan hi ish hi but we are also joined uh, Dave Tamble, Dave. Oh my gosh, oh, Dave Tamble. Wow. Who's Dave Tamble? <laughs> Dave Campbell's I don't Texas ask questions. football, <laughs> college football insider, Shahan J. Raja. Hi, Shahan. Hey, what's up, everybody? You're here for a very special reason because mm, today, a very special show. It is. It's a very special show. Definitely. Um, today is our uh, m- football movie of the month, our inaugural football movie of the month, uh, and we will be discussing Friday Night Lights, the film. From 2004. Ever heard of it? Uh, I had not seen it until this, th- until yesterday. That yeah, I, I hadn't either until Sunday. Huh? That's wild. That is yeah. wild. Yeah, that's crazy I, to me. That y'all I just, I just that. never got around. Actually, I'd never seen the show until, I guess, a year ago. Mm-hmm. I'd never heard the book until this past season, and now well, there you go. I hadn't seen the movie until. I still haven't <laughs> seen the show, but I mean the movie. Yeah. The show, I'll get more on. like excuse. I mean, it's, it's a commitment, right? The show, right, right. right. It's, it's exactly. a big, I, I felt like the. I, I, know, I felt like the movie was like. This is an hour and a half. I felt of it was your a life. big deal when I, yeah, when I was <laughs> yeah. growing up. It was a big deal, and so. Um, yeah, true. I was high school. To see. I, I I didn't really grow up in a <laughs> high school football household. I'd say that's probably yeah, plays a part fair. of it, yeah. but uh, but had to get around to seeing it now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Today is Friday, January thirty first, twenty twenty. Three hundred days till Thanksgiving. Wow. 300, guys. Nice. Uh, episode 895, 895, Carlos Lee's OPS and his illustrious Texas Rangers career. Okay, so today is our football movie of the month. We are going to review each month during the offseason. We're going to review a different football movie. At the end of this show, we're going to tweet a poll for you to select our next football movie of the month for February. It'll be the last Friday of every month during the offseason, so probably through July. We'll probably won't do one in August. Well, stuff to do. Right. Uh, <laughs> but in any case... Uh, I'm not quarterbacking this, though. You can't make me. Instead, <laughs> we'll toss it over to uh, to our, our alpha over there. We'll toss it over to the captain. All Ashley right. Pickle leading the way. Let's talk about Friday Night Lights. He's still going. Um, okay, so we've got a couple different categories. The first one we will start off with here are overall thoughts on the movie. A, a quick summary of your overall thoughts. How about we start with Tepper? Okay. Um, overall, as I mentioned, I'd never seen this movie before Mm -hmm. and I was kind of dreading it (laughs) because I felt like, like if I don't like it, is that like, that's, that's, that's an indictment. That's an indictment on me. (laughs) Right. right? Right, Like as a Texas high school football guy, if I don't like this movie, which is like the quintessential Texas high school (laughs) football movie, uh, it's going to be problematic for me. I'm happy to report that. Kind of liked it. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was pretty yeah. good. Yeah, I, pretty good. Um, pretty good. Uh, you, you could, there are, wor- I have spent an hour and 45 minutes of my life in worse ways. Yeah. Let's put mm-hmm. it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, uh, minus, minus what, 20 minutes or so? Mr. There are things. Watching it quickly. There are things that I. How did you watch it quickly? Over, overall, I want to, <laughs> I want to issue a positioning statement. Because I do have a whole list of some nitpicks okay. that oh, I am. I have a lot. Very I have a lot. upset about. <laughs> sure. But. My overall top line, yeah, I pretty I pretty much liked it. I thought it was a pretty solid movie, mm-hmm. and I would go so far as to recommend it to almost anyone. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, I think 
I mean, I thought this leading in. I hadn't seen it in a while, but mm-hmm. I thought I had this uh, preconceived notion in my mind, and I think it lived up. I think it's still my favorite depiction of on-field football Ooh. in a movie. Mm-hmm. I think that when you look at the uh, – we'll talk about that later, obviously, um, the actual depiction of it. But as far as the in-game action and the overall summation – of what it does for describing the culture of Texas high school football, more specifically West Texas, mm-hmm. I think it was accurate, and I think I, I really did enjoy that. Um, obviously, there are nitpicks we can get into, uh, but as far as being a – first of all, it wasn't it's not a very long movie. Um, Less I, than two I, hours. I think I, I underestimated how short it was. I forgot how short it was in, in comparison to a bunch of movies nowadays. Um, but I think for an hour 45, you know, hour 30, hour 45, it was a good summation – and I think it might be my favorite football movie. If I'm being wow, wow, okay, okay, okay. Well, that's high praise. Yeah, okay. I think that one thing that was interesting for me was that I just read the book, right? Like I, right. I just read the book, and so um, I think that part of my experience with it was definitely colored by the fact that I was like, "Why did they cut this? Mm-hmm. Why did they change this?" Well, you know, my the big thing I kept bringing up to my wife when I was watching it is, "Why is Brian Chavez a defensive player? He was a tight end. I don't mm-hmm. like, you mm-hmm. know, just little things like that." I mean, obviously that's gonna <laughs> affect my uh, my experience. I think there was a really good movie. I, I had a good time watching it. I think that it's just right. I mean, I think the uh, we'll get to it a little bit later. I think the on-field football was actually done very well. Um, it is kind of interesting because I feel like after watching this, uh, you know, a lot of the sort of stories that we see like this are not told in TV shows because now you kind of get a little bit more long-form ability to do it. And, and it is kind of interesting how they kind of tried to pick and choose what to pack into, into a two-hour movie. But I thought it was a really good movie. I thought that it told the story very well. Um, and, and again, I mean, I, I think that the characters were written well. The only real sort of criticism I have is that I think that they tried to pack a lot of stories into a short amount of time, and sometimes that was a little bit difficult. But but I agree, it was a very enjoyable movie. You know, just for to sit down and, and kind of watch it and, and just experience it like that, I think it was a really good movie. Ashley? Uh, yeah, so I, like Ish, had seen the movie before. This was definitely not the first time. Um, I've always enjoyed the movie, but it was nice to kind of, like, especially after like realizing, oh, this is like my job now. <laughs> Um, to be able to sit down and watch a movie like really about Texas high school football and to recognize the names of the team and stuff, that was really cool for me because I hadn't watched it since I've had this job. So I think that overall, I agree. I think the we'll t- again talk about that later, but the football in it is good, and I think that especially growing up in a small town, man, I think that they did a very, very good job of making it very Texas-centered. You know, one thing that – and, and w- we can keep this in overall thoughts, mm-hmm. uh, but I do want to – mention um i thought one thing that was really odd was if you read the book one of the one of the key components to the entire story is like um like the race relations in in Mm -hmm. in odessa yeah and that was pretty much totally absent from this movie there are a couple throwaway lines like they have the booster dinner obviously they have the um the meet up with the coaches before the the meet up with the coaches so like they have some sprinkles of it but Mm -hmm. you can definitely tell that that was like all right, this is going to be kind of sprinkled in. Right. And it's going to well, be mostly about and, just this team. And that's <laughs> definitely something where, where I'm talking about where it's like you can't explore that in two hours. You right, know, like right, it's, right. Just, no. it's just so much to explore in two hours. Um, you know, sort of uh, this, is, this is a different sort of thing. Again, when you talk about the little details that they change, like they played Marshall in the first game in this game and oh. k- kicked the crap out of them. Mm-hmm. No, no, this, it was uh, Midland. No, well, they no, no, said no, Marshall. Marshall. Oh, they said yeah. Marshall. Because that trust me, in real life, it made the list. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> we, we can get to it in a but second. Yes, but yes. Uh, yeah, that's sort of the thing I'm talking about with like the little change where it's like, it's kind of changes the meaning of what's happening a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but you know, again, I, I think that, like, again, I know the story pretty well now because I just read the book. That's a yeah. big part of it. That definitely colors it. But, um, but yeah, I think that the way they portrayed the characters and the depth that they gave to the characters as high school football players is very good. I also thought, and I'll just throw this out there as a blanket statement. Yeah. I thought it was pretty well acted on the whole. Yeah, um, nope. for sure, for sure. I thought that I was, I was real worried when I saw that Tim McGraw. Was in <laughs> yeah, because uh, yeah. I'm just very. In his first scene, basically, he's yeah. in there all chest hair, oh, shirt. Oh yeah. man, he's and that's it up. And yeah. that's one of the worst scenes of the movie when yeah. he's basically oh, watching yeah. his oh, son yeah. Oh, yeah. do the. Unspeakable. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. But he was not bad. No, no I think he was very good. He, he was w- good scumbag dad. He was like, good scumbag dad. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, you know, even though all of these high school kids are 27 years old, yeah. I yeah. thought right. that yes. I thought that overall, pretty much all of them carried their weight. There weren't Definitely. any. Yeah, there I made that comment too. There weren't really. I don't think there was any real 
like noticeable weak links in I the cast. I don't think so. Right. I don't. In fact, I thought that there were underexplored members of the cast. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I yeah. agree with that. There's definitely some moments where you're like, I would have loved to have seen more. Like, I mean, Ivory Christian. Uh, yeah. I they, felt like I get it. Yeah. He's the quiet guy, but like. There's something to that. Right. Um, there's something. There was something more. Uh, I have more to say about Chris Comer later. I feel right. like there was more to him that could have been explained. Well, I mean, they kept calling Ivory Christian like preacher, preacher and, like, and, and and but they never explained that. Yeah, you know that, like, that is, he grew up wanting he, to be a preacher. Yeah, is he is he religious? Yeah. Like, there's there's no like religious element to him except no, for like, no, no. the fact that he kind of leads the prayer at the end. But that that's is it. it. That's <laughs> it. I also thought it was like I thought it was really, I thought it was really well shot. Yeah, yes. like, oh, really yeah. well shot. Yeah, like that, the fact that it was released in 2004. Yeah. yeah, like I was like, man, yeah. this looks like a movie that came out in early, you know, early aughts. And it did a really good job too. Of it was shot so well, but it also had like the the old timey feel to it. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. you could tell that it was supposed to be meant like shot back in '88, right? But right. it was still so beautifully shot with that taste, that like flavor of the old school stuff. Right. Yeah. Um. But anyway, okay, we can go on to our next one. So the next category is what are your or what was your favorite scene? From the movie, um, there's, there's, I think, kind of cut this into two categories. Sure, there's the scene that I thought was the best, mm-hmm. right? Well, we have a least favorite scene coming up. Oh no, 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 no! I know, okay. but then also the scene that I liked, liked the most, yeah. Yeah. Okay. right? Yeah. yeah, the scene that was the best was uh, Booby crying in the car. Yes, yeah. Yeah. that's the yeah, best yeah. scene in the movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not close. That's yeah. an yeah. unbelievable performance. Yeah. I don't know who that actor. What Tyre, actor? Uh, Tyrese Gibson. Is that? No, not Tyrese Gibson. Um, God, I'm, oh, I can't believe I said Tyrese Gibson. Uh, um, whoever that actor is, did Derek it, Luke did yes. a terrific job because even leading up to that moment, I felt like okay, maybe he's the weak link in the cast. Like he'd been a little bit one note, a little bit he'd like he'd been playing up to here. Like, yeah, he was, he was <laughs> very up to here the whole movie, and then that moment, and hit. then that moment yeah. hit, and it was like, man, that was that's the best scene in the movie. Yeah. yeah, that is that is the best scene in the movie. Uh, I would say that the scene that I enjoyed the most was probably the coin flip. Yeah, yeah. that's a great scene. <laughs> that was a really good that's one. A that's a scene. fun yeah. scene. That's a great I scene. I love the, the throwaway line uh, when uh, uh, they, uh, I think it's Abilene Cooper's coin. It was like, we have some controversy here at the coin toss. I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, yeah. <laughs> a little throwaway scene. was like, yeah. how is that? How's your controversy? <laughs> how is there awesome. controversy at the coin toss? <laughs> controversy. <laughs> it's either heads or tails. Well, I, love, I love just the straight up country accent when he goes, that coin's a little faded there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that, a little faded there. I love that. that. Tails to you. <laughs> he, he goes, yep, it's tails. <laughs> yeah. It was, um, that, that <laughs> was something that I, I thought that, you know, if you're talking about, again, two categories, mm-hmm. one that's like, I mean, not. I'm I'm not a film critic, but like right. if you talk Oscar worthy, mm-hmm. like the guy who like like award worthy was booby crying in the car. Yeah. But my favorite scene, the scene that I thought was most enjoyable, was mm. probably the coin flip scene. I think I have I think I had two in that category mm-hmm. too. My I think the best scene was um, uh, booby crying in the car. But coming coming from cleaning out his locker to crying in the car. Yeah. Yes. Because yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he goes from up here to immediately down mm-hmm. here. Yeah. And I think that the 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 transition from that is special. That's what makes that scene really. It seemed realistic. Too. Yeah, yeah, cuz like that's he, legitimately how it would go in right. right. He put he put on the he put on the Booby Miles persona. Right. And then all of a sudden he's back down to, to right. you know, uh, to James Earl basically. To, yeah. um, and then uh, the other my favorite scene might be I think it's one of my favorite intros because it shows them all going to summer camp. Right? Yeah. Yeah, those Booby's jogging. Intro. Uh, they're all walking. They all meet up in the parking lot. You know, state, state. You know, slapping each other's hands. And you hear the radio coming on, like talking about the hype, mm-hmm. talking about how much money Coach mm-hmm. Gaines is making, and like that whole thing, building up to just them meeting in the parking lot and camp starting, right? And that I love that whole like you see Booby coming from his side of the neighbor, his side of Odessa, right? Mm-hmm. Kids follow him on the bike, like wearing the Booby jerseys. And I love all that. that. <laughs> That's that, a great that scene. That's a great scene, shot. Yeah, setting the scene of like, all right, here's where. Uh, two worlds or two Americas kind of coming together mm-hmm. right. to make this team and to go right. into fall c- or summer camp. Yeah. I mean, honestly, for me, I was just going to say a lot of the, the booby arc. Like, I mean, yeah. I, I think that a lot of it was really good just in terms of, you know, when they go up to the clinic and all that sort of stuff. And like, he's like, no, this like, I can play on this. When am I coming back? Sort of, right. you're, you're just a Midland doctor. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I love that. Um, definitely when he's cleaning out his locker. I mean, I, mean, I think that I think that's. You know, just that whole arc. And I think that it's just because also the character is so intriguing mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. me. And 
I think that they did a good job with it. Again, there's so much more in the book too that that even makes it even better than that. But but I mean, I think that that definitely him cleaning out his locker and crying in the car yeah. was was just a whole nother level than, than anything strong, else for me. Super strong scene. Is it quarterback? Is it Mark? Is Mike, Mike Winchill. Mike, Mike Winchill. Mike. Uh, I think probably like my favorite. Obviously, the booby one was fantastic from like yeah a, a film critic perspective. I think my favorite scene is when Mike at the very end when like everything's gone down and he he throws the football to the kids but it's not that he oh, did yeah. that it's when he turns and Cracks smiles smile. yeah. <laughs> and i think like for me i don't know if that like hits home with being in a small town like you cannot wait to get out of it like you just you just want to leave but like as soon as you're done you look back and think like you know it wasn't that bad and i yeah. think that that did a whole lot the oh, the other one that makes me just crack up laughing every time was when Waterbug forgot his helmet. Like, obviously, <laughs> obviously the injury <laughs> comes after that, but the coach yelling at him, you think you can go out there and play without a helmet? Like, that is just... So I, good. Yeah, <laughs> I, I want to be, be clear. I thought all the coaches were super believable. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, and especially the way they yeah, ridiculed yeah. them, the way there's like the way they uh, encouraged them, yes. and also like ridiculed them. <laughs> like <laughs> Billy, they're funny in a lot of their insults when they do it. <laughs> yeah. too. Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah. yeah like I, I have it written very, very early, and especially like when he's doing those interviews with um like the like at summer at summer camp mm-hmm. or you know at at two days basically, yeah. uh, he's doing those interviews. I thought he was extremely believable as a Texas high school football coach. Yeah, like, when he's given the coach answers. It's oh, the well, and oh, even yeah. just like the tone of it. Like right, I right, know right. coaches who talk like that. Yeah. Definitely. And my, I thought he was super believable. Some of my favorite moments was when uh, uh, Billingsley, I think, fumbles against. I think it was against Midland Lee, and he's like really frustrated, and he's like, he's just like, uh, are you okay? Like he's just sitting down, really calmly talking to him. He's like, you okay, son? He's like, yeah. are you are you are you and in line he here? And then like he puts his helmet off. on. He puts his helmet on. And he's like, no, no, you're gonna sit on the bench for a while. Take the helmet off. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like visibly frustrated, right. but he's just like completely talking like this, and just like coaches do that. They yeah. know how to contain themselves, and then uh, and then so when the moments of when he does like raise his voice, is like wake up, you know, it's like oh okay, coaches, coach is mad now. One more scene I loved. Another scene that I loved. Yeah. At the very end, I loved the postscripts. All yes. the, the way they did the postscripts. Yeah. And more importantly, I loved the two deep board. Yeah. And I yeah. loved the idea of what that represents for Texas high school right. football coaches next and time. programs. Just like, all right, it's like, over. that's over. Yeah. And now we're thinking about next year. Like, right. all right, it's on. To the, like, he's moving the next guy up mm-hmm. and stuff like that. That was the, – I loved the way that that ended. I, I'm going to disagree with you, Pickle. Mm-hmm. I didn't love the smiling thing. Because you know? the whole thing is like Booby's trying to get Winchell to smile and stuff like that. There's all these things in the weight room. And I was like, it felt a little a little forced and a little hammy yeah. at the end. No, like, oh, he's going to smile. I, I don't know. I, but that I was, liked it. That was, a, that, was a, <laughs> that, was a, that was a mild cheese moment for me that I was like, mm-hmm. eh, I could I could have done without. Mm-hmm. But um, I like the cheese. Yeah, but there were uh, – I mean, there was there were a lot of really, really good scenes mm-hmm. definitely in this, in this movie, both from like a – like well acted perspective and just like a, a like a true yeah, yeah I thought I mean almost all the football scenes we'll get to some of the things I didn't like but <laughs> almost all of the football scenes mm-hmm. felt very real and very fleshed out they felt yeah. like it didn't feel like a it felt like you were watching a game yeah right you know hundred percent like all the football scenes were great 100%. right well and, and I honestly well we, we we can save it for the realistic okay football, so, yeah all right so up next we will go with your least favorite scene. On the opposite I'll side let somebody else go first yes. because okay. I have I, I have something. Oh, okay. of course you do. <laughs> so I have I have a least favorite moment in a great scene, um, in an otherwise I think nearly flawlessly sequenced and paced scene. Mike's run at the end is my least favorite part because uh, at the very yeah. because that is the ultimate like kid in the backyard imagining himself scoring the winning touchdown or obviously this they didn't win but like he's like i'm gonna jump over this defender i'm gonna throw off this defender i'm gonna spin this defense and it's like all right he pulled out like 12 moves <laughs> and for like a five yard run <laughs> and, the, and the movie and the and like the it was one of the times in the in the in the movie where i think other than this part i think the music is done it, to the it teeters that line of cheesy, but I feel like the rest of the movie's okay. This is the moment where like the music just goes over the top for me. It's like dun 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 dun, dun. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like I'm just like I, too much. I, it's like it's way too much. Yeah. Way too over the top. And I felt other than that, and again, it's it's the movie that's the scene in particular that I think uh, was depicted the best. But that whole state championship scene and sequence and pacing I thought was perfect outside of that moment. Cause it was like 
ah, uh, okay, cool. Here comes Hero Ball. Like, here yeah. comes, like, <laughs> yeah. and Mike yeah. puts on the cape, and he's throwing off defenders, and it's like, all right. That was, that's the one moment in that movie where I'm just like, I'm out. Like, I'm out of, I'm completely, this is the movie, this is fake and not real at all. Like, that was the one moment where I was just like, all right. Well, well, I have to say, too, I mean, uh, you know, you mentioned, like, uh, the, the play before, they yeah. got called for holding. Right. You're going to tell me there was holding on that play right. and not on yeah. the final right. play? Yeah. 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 What? Like the exactly. there's, right. a guy, there's a guy who's like, nope, we're going to go over here now. <laughs> like, right. like, excuse me, I need to talk to these officials. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the officiating yeah. left something to be desired in the, in, in the state championship game. All right. Uh, for me, I, I, I mean, I understood the value of it. It was, you know, it was good seeing all that. I did not enjoy the scene when uh, when they were driving back and the and Tim McGraw threw his ring out of the car and like all that yeah. stuff. I did not care for that. I mean, I just I understood the value of it. Like, yeah. but it dragged on a little bit. It felt like like it just lasted a little bit longer than I really would have wanted. I feel like, um, you know, and and like yeah, there were like two or three minutes there where he's just like there in the weeds and it's just like. All right. I mean, this sucks. Obviously, we get it. Like, yeah. I think that they could have just berated him on the way home and not been enough. You know, we could have gotten the meaning of that. Like, I, I don't know. I, it was just, it was just a little too much for me. Pickle. Um. Yeah. No, I completely agree. I think my ultimate least favorite scene is the ring one. It's mm -hmm. just, yeah. I get again. Yeah. Why they put it in. Uh, the other one that I don't like, I could not stand, was when they, uh, when the car salesman brings in all those guys into the yeah. coach's office because that legitimately happens. And like, I feel like after being <laughs> in a small town and then also working for college athletics, there are know-it-alls that come in all the time to offices and they just hound oh, you yeah. thinking how much they know. Well, you can stunt you here. Do, like, yeah, exactly. You need to do this and rush. you need to do And the whole time you're sitting there going, just shut up. Like, <laughs> That's not our scheme. What I need to do. I, I, right. I've, I've got the job. Oh, no. you know? Every, everybody is convinced that they know how to coach this exactly. team better than Gary Exactly. And games. that, right. yeah, that one just, I guess that just rubs me wrong from, from everything. Also, but. more on the ring. Uh, he's not finding that ring. No. no. I'm Absolutely sorry. Not. I'm he's sorry. driving I, 60 miles an hour right. down he's a not, country not road. <laughs> yeah. There's no lights. Yeah. 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 Nope. All right. Come on. Come on. I got three. Okay, go for it. You got three? Of course you do. I do. One. They're out there s shooting skeet of some kind? Oh, I, sure. I think they're shooting rocks. They're shooting rocks, and yeah. a clearly 26-year-old actor says, I don't feel 17. <laughs> I was like, well, yeah, I totally, I, I would buy that. Um, when Booby is trying to make um, Mike Winchell laugh in the weight room, um, and he does an extremely uncomfortable and uh, Bill Cosby impression that has not aged well, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> I was going to... <laughs> Okay, but let's get to the real part. Okay. <laughs> there is one moment that I paused and last night watching this movie said, you have got to be stinking kidding. <laughs> they make the playoffs and they flash up the bracket. And oh, I yeah. understand <laughs> that I'm a Texas high school football guy and realignment is right around the corner, so it's on my brain. But that bracket is a disaster. <laughs> disaster. There's a number. I got all these things right now. First of all, they play. They play. They say it's Marshall. Like, early on, they, play, they open the season with Marshall. Right, which, which is clearly yeah, Midland, Midland. And it's like, it's Midland's jerseys. Like, I don't yeah. know why you can't just like say it says Midland. dogs on yeah. it. Like, that's it says dogs. <laughs> I don't get that. Oh, does the premium's hyphenated. That's a small thing that bothers me. Yeah, the, um, I, I noticed that too. Okay. <laughs> the going into the – they play North Shore Galena yeah. for some yeah. reason. Yeah. 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 Midway through the, the season, too. Yeah. Midway I, I through the season. About that right. one. <laughs> um, okay, here, I looked it up. And then going into the game against Lee, mm -hmm. they said that Cooper beat Woodland. Right. <laughs> um, and so if, they, if, if Permian wins, they're in the playoffs, right? Yeah. I looked up their 88th district. It was a little Southwest Conference. It's, it's Permian, Lee, Abilene, San Angelo Central, well, Midland, Cooper, and Odessa. Well, and what's funny is that in real life, the three teams that were tied were. Odessa Permian, Midland Lee, and Midland High School, not yeah. Abilene Cooper. I wonder if they just could not get the rights. Well, to I just wonder Midland. Or Ma something. Maybe they thought that people would be confused if there was Midland and Midland, Midland. Lee. Well, I mean, that, they, that's again, that's something that Bargany okay. brought up. It is a national movie, so like, yeah. right. true. true. Okay, but, but like even Abilene Cooper of all the schools, right. that's just a very confusing. But let's get to the bracket there. because the bracket is the worst part of this movie. Oh, they play. <laughs> they play like Nimitz and like the bra area. Oh no 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 no! They play Dallas Jesuit in round one. It's worse. Okay. The bracket's a disaster. Yeah. Carter and Laredo are in the same region. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Carter and Laredo <laughs> are in the same region. Okay, <laughs> Laporte is misspelled. Yes, yes, I did notice that. Midland Lee is playing Baytown in the first round. 
Okay? But here, and then, it, but but uh, uh, Permian beats San Angelo in the second round. That's their district foe that did not make the playoffs because they're the same district. But here's the thing, okay? <laughs> Is Permian opens against Jesuit. Yeah. Can yeah. anyone yeah. tell me why that's the dumbest thing in the world? Because Jesuit didn't join the UIL until 2004. <laughs> it was 16 years until they joined the UIL. <laughs> Wait, so that, that also means that this that when this movie was made, Jesuit was not yet a UIL member. I think member. it was their first year. Well, yeah. it was released in 2004. Right. 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 So like when it they was, were being produced, it, it probably wasn't yeah. as yet. It was. They were probably getting set. I was flabbergasted. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. Did I, I'm pretty sure that they joined uh, the, the UIL in 2000. Did, did like, Peter Bird early go to Jesuit or something? Like, it has to be something like that, Texas. right? And that's the thing. <laughs> Somebody. That is such an unforced error. Right. right? That's what bothers me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this movie would have been a star better for me <laughs> if they had just hired Craig Way as a consultant. <laughs> Well, and seriously, the, the thing that's confusing to me, too, is like, and again, this is where it gets to like, this is a tiny thing to change. Like, why did you change it this much? Mm -hmm. Is like, I don't see what it would have hurt to like try to find the playoff bracket. You know, like, like maybe there's some teams that you could have gotten on there and you, you replace them with comparable teams, maybe. But like, but like, I mean, there was a real bracket, right. you know, it did exist. We ha we can find it pretty easily. But here's the thing, though, right? Even they played Jesuit in the first round. Right. Definitely not Jesuit's uniforms. No. Like, like I just yeah. don't under like I don't get well, why that's important. Right. Well, and I, honestly, during during those flashby scenes, I couldn't even tell if they were supposed to be the games that were going on. Like, I have no idea. Like, I mean, I was paying a lot of attention because <laughs> I'm I'm a dork. But that was to me. They flashed that bracket up, and I paused it, and I just read through up Yeah. I was like, we did it too. <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. Like this, it was a disaster, and it like. It took me out of the movie for for three, three minutes, minutes while I calmed down. <laughs> and I was like, "This is this is very this makes me very upset." <laughs> and then I was like, "Okay, I'm I'm fine now. I can I can Reel suspend. It back in. I have to recognize that this is not a movie exclusively for me. Yeah. This is a movie for a wide audience." Mm -hmm. And but I did I thought that there were just so many little unforced errors from an accuracy right. perspective. And I understand, like for example, like if you didn't know, uh, Permian and Carter didn't play in the title game. Semifinal. No, they played. They played in the, the semifinal. They played at Texas Stadium. Yeah. Right. I uh, was texting. No, no, no. They played at a uh, UT Austin's field. That that was also oh, confusing yeah, yeah. to you me. It was like, why the Astrodome? They must have not been able to shoot at UT, yeah. right? That has to be it. Probably. Right. That must. That must. Because because I was like, oh, they mentioned the Astrodome. They're probably going to come around and be like, oh yeah, no, we're going to play at DKR, right? Mm -hmm. But no, they just played the Astrodome. They also, they also said a, there were fifty five thousand people there, which is. Uh, <laughs> there was nope. a clip of uh, the Carter team in like practice when they first like started when they were sitting down there watching, and it was in Texas Stadium. Do you think that was like real? Well, footage? that's what I was wondering if it, it was footage like, from the real it games. It looked like real but footage, not maybe like, not or the from, game, but the well, the practice, practice scene. Yeah. We yeah. said that out loud. I was like, I think that's real footage from the actual Dallas Carter <clears throat> team because it was down at the end zone and they were running right. out underneath the uh, maybe goal right. post. Well, and, and so so back to you know we like I mentioned you know them playing Marshall in week one like it was a big storyline that it was West Texas versus East Texas yeah. in week two. Mm -hmm. um, you know them going across the state to do it. They actually chartered a plane. They paid thirty thousand dollars to get mm -hmm. their kids to, to Marshall. Um, so it was just confusing that then they made it week one. They made it so that they killed them when they actually lost to Marshall. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, too, is that all three of the teams that were tied at the top only had one loss in district. But then they made it where, mm -hmm. b where these, uh, these teams had two loss in yeah. district for really no reason. It was, You know, like, I, I, that's just the sort of thing where I'm like, it wouldn't have changed the movie at all. Yeah. You know, I don't know why you had to make it like because, that. Because the thing is, they got so many of the little things right. Well, right. I'll, say, mm, I'll disagree with that. With the with the uh, the one or two losses, um, because narrative for the movie, right? A big thing was they don't know what to do without Booby. Yeah, yeah. They and so they lose, lose their first game games. without yeah. Booby. Right. They get killed because they don't know what to do. Right. And the Midland Lee game was also like they kind of sort of find what they're doing, but they also this is their make or break and they lose. And it wouldn't right? have been and so yeah. I think dramatic. Narr yeah. Narratively, I think that's what they were going for. Yeah, they could have gone, you know, they lose their game without Booby or they lose to Mid or they lose to Midland. Well, but, but the thing is, is though that like they lost a game earlier in the year, yes. Mm -hmm. And but if they had won that game against Midland Lee in real life though, they would have clinched a playoff spot still. Right. Yeah. Like that wouldn't have changed that. Right. Um, you know, because because again, every team finished with one loss and like I I just don't Again, I don't think it would have changed that narrative. I mean, because, like, for example, I, 
like Booby Miles did not get hurt during a, a, a live game. Right. You know, he got hurt during a scrimmage preseason. Mm-hmm. I understand why you make it that it happened during a live game. That that adds to the Agreed. narrative. Because, you know, I mean, hey, he got hurt during a scrimmage. We're not going to show a scrimmage. Like, that's right. not yeah. worth it. Um, but, like, again, this just felt like something where, again, if they win that game, everything happens the same as if, both teams had two losses. It just makes me. It's, it's just odd because there were so many little things they got right. For yeah. example, they have the if you it, when they're running out into the Astrodome, mm-hmm. up there they have what is called the Texas Bowl at that time, which is what they call the state championship game. They call yeah. it the Texas Bowl. They had the logo up on the oh, screen. Really? Like I'm like, that's awesome. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and they they shot at Ratliff and they right. shot at Shotwell mm-hmm. in Abilene. Right. Yeah. All these locations. I'm like, man, they got so many of these little things right. They had the right Midland Lee uniforms. Right. They had the right Abilene uniforms. They had all these things that. I was like, man, somebody very clearly like <clears throat> took the time to get that right. But then there were other ones that's like, no, that's very easily like checkable. <laughs> right. Like, why didn't you just do that? I, the, the other thing that I paused the movie and had to rewind to make sure that I caught right was when they were running into the stadium, the, uh, the announcer said it was West Texas versus East Texas. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was <laughs> it's, it's like It's, it's like, like not wrong, but like... It's, it's wrong. E- more Eastern it's wrong. Texas. Eastern Texas. <laughs> it's way more East. Yeah, uh, it's it's more west than we are, or more east. Than yeah, we are. I thought right. that. I thought about that too. I was like, technic. I mean, Dallas it is, is downtown on the eastern Dallas. Part. Uh, yeah. I know, but ta- Dallas it is, is on the eastern on the part. Eastern if part if of you the went to Tyler and was like, "I'm from East Texas. I'm from oh, Coppell." No, I totally agree with you. But <laughs> come on, I, I I thought that, and then my thought was like, okay, they have to sell this to like a right. like a like a, a, na- na- a national audience. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't think you needed to do that. I, it's, it's big city versus small like smaller yeah. town. I think that's the way that you sell. That was the thing. I think you did it like it's like like yeah. urban versus rural th- i think that's that's the yeah. better way to do it yeah. but in any case um again yeah. so a lot of hot takes from pepper <laughs> oh Lee's man Imagine i'm that. sorry that but they flashed, i have a lot of nitpicks they too, flashed yeah. the bracket of them, like you know <laughs> all right we got to move on before you have okay. a heart attack go on <laughs> up next we're gonna go with your character mvp who was your favorite <clears throat> character uh i think this is easy i think it's coach Gaines. I think it's. Yeah. I think it's. Uh, I think that's easily the. I think the it's easiest answer. I sure. think. I think. I think it's. E- I think that Billy Bob Thornton was great. Mm-hmm. I thought that he was believable. I thought he was the best actor in this movie. I thought he was the most compelling character. Um, I would go with um, with Coach Gaines. I th- I think it's Mike Winchell. Mm. I think it's Lucas Black as Mike Winchell because I think when we're looking at <clears throat> the average high school football player, I think when you no matter where you are in the state, I think it's Mike Winchell, mm-hmm. a guy who kind of feels like a passenger. Right, you know what? What did uh, what did uh, Chavo say at the burger joint? You got to exist between those two seconds of handing the booby the ball, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> and that's basically how he takes his job, right? Until booby gets hurt, and all of a sudden, oh god, you know, now I have to be the leader, and now I have to be the one who more or less carries this team, the one who rallies this team. Um, obviously, he has responsibilities at home as well. Um, in the beginning, I love that his mom's reading him the playbook, and he's trying to figure it out, and he gets one, and he like messes up, and they're like. Are you are you ready for this? Like, you yeah, know, are you yeah, ready for this yeah. big responsibility? And so, at the end, he obviously proves himself to be worthy of that. Uh, he has the pressure of, uh, I believe, uh, Kansas Wesleyan coming to talk to him, and like, you know, it's NAIA, but he still wants a shot. And like, right? I think again, I think when we're talking about the average high school football player, I think Mike Winchell's story is the most universal. Um, at least the way it was depicted in the movie is the most universal, universally. Uh, resident relative to the average player. Mm-hmm. So. I wish that they had showed a couple scenes of him being good at football. Because he, w- he was good. I mean, everything that they showed was like him being a disaster, basically. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Until like that last scene, basically. Right. That, that's my only, that's the only thing I wish they did with him. Uh, I mean, again, I, I think I think for me, it's the same what I was talking about earlier. I loved Booby Miles as a character. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that, like you said, I mean, the scene with him running in with all the kids behind him, that's phenomenal. And, and, and obviously, like, the the scene with him at the clinic and the scene with him leaving the locker. I mean, mm-hmm. like it just I, I thought that all of it was fantastic. Uh, I would say that honestly, I know that we talked about this a little bit earlier with the this one could have been dove into a little bit more, but the preacher man was probably my favorite character. Like mm-hmm. I I mm-hmm. love the athlete that doesn't say anything, <laughs> that does not talk trash, that goes out there, does their job, and then like the scene when he finally like because we were talking, my roommates and I were talking about that. It's like he had like maybe two lines mm-hmm. up until that 
the halftime of the game. And I love that because it showed like, oh, I'm a leader. I'm here. Like, I loved him. The other person, I do. I love Mike's mom. The opening scene yeah. of her going <laughs> over the plays, I was like, if that isn't me when I have a son one day, <laughs> I don't know what is. Like, I love that. Like, we are forget school. We're going to study your football plays, and that's that's going to make me happy one day. So, yeah, I, I love her. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was I mean, overall, like I said, I, I thought – Almost every one of the characters I, I liked. Mm-hmm. Like, almost every mm-hmm. one of the characters I, I, I bought into, I, I found believable. And, and, and yeah, so I, I would go with that. All right. Um, coming up next, we've got the opposite side of the spectrum on your char- your least valuable so character. So I, I, I need to get some clarity on how we want to do this. Okay. So, because so, there's least valuable in terms of least meaningful to the movie, there's least valuable in terms of bringing the movie down, or is there least valuable in terms of, like, I liked this character least? Like, I, like I, I think there's um, a lot of different ways I to go with it. I think it's, I like this character least. Okay. Yeah. You thought it was me, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's fine. But, okay. I mean, we've kind of done then, a, then that makes kind of done, way like, too, like, a 1A, like super 1B. Easy for me. We've yeah. kind of done <laughs> right. 1A, 1B for everything anyway, right. mm-hmm. so you can you can go with two yeah. answers. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the character that I liked least, I mean, I don't I, I think it's an obvious answer, Charles Billingley. Like that mm-hmm. dude sucks. Mm-hmm. That dude <laughs> sucks. A uh, very important part of the movie. I think obviously Tim McGraw did a great job, but holy crap, that dude sucks. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I I think that there were multiple characters that were underutilized in the film. I mean, obviously Ivory Christian, I think is mm-hmm. is a big one that that they could have just done a little bit more with him. I mean, especially because like, I mean there's only two main black characters in the film, you know, and, and it's like Booby and his uncle. And then there's Ivory who we never explore at all, mm-hmm. you know, and like, and like everybody else, we're kind of seeing their family and stuff like that. And I'd, I'd say something similar with like, you know, Brian Chavez is like a genius. He mm-hmm. was, he was the valedictorian right, of the school. He goes to Harvard. He, goes to Harvard. Yeah, he becomes a lawyer. Like, like this dude is like a big time dude. And they, you know, I mean, again, they just never really show that or, mm-hmm. or explore that. Um, and, and again, I don't know why they made him a defensive player. Just like out of nowhere, they're just like, no, he doesn't play tight end. Of course he doesn't play tight end. He plays yeah. like linebacker or something like that. But that, that's obviously irrelevant. But yeah, so so my least favorite is definitely Charles Billingley, and I think that Ivory Christian was the most underutilized. Uh, I think underutilized, I'm going to go with Chris Comer. Yeah. Lee Thompson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I thought he had such a, a interesting story of – Oh, I'm here to ride the coattails of Booby. <laughs> right. I'm here to. I'm, I'm third string. I'm Booby's backup's backup. Yeah. And then right. all of a sudden, he becomes like he's not the star, but he becomes like a very pivotal part of that offense. And then like outside of his kick return, and he, I think he has like one play against Midland Lee. I think outside of that, he there's nothing else. And it's like yeah. well, and then at the very end, they flash up the thing where it's like, oh yeah, oh, by yeah. the way, he went on to win state yeah, next he year. He went on to win <laughs> state. <laughs> oh, was like, cool. Right. Thank you like, for putting that up on right. the text. Right. right. I want right, to see because right. like there's the one scene where he breaks out against <clears> I forgot who, but. He has his breakout game. Then there's one scene of like him being kind of the man in school, and right. that was it. That was all we saw Chris Comer after that. And so I thought he was a little un- under, uh, a little underutilized. Yeah. Um, the other ones, obviously, uh, Connie Britton, uh, yeah, Coach Gary Gaines' wife. But that was the reason I was telling you, I was telling Greg this. That was the reason why uh, Peter Berg brought her and uh, the actor who played Buddy Garrity. Why well, he brought both of those characters back for the show yeah. because Bradley he, uh, right, yes, he believed that they were underwritten and he felt bad and he was like, you know what, I'm going to give you guys more fleshed out characters in the right. show. So. I think it's Sharon Gaines. I think it's yeah. I think it's it's, yeah. it's Connie Britton is her character is, is that's my that's my LVP simply because like that the coach's wife that would yeah. have been that's a, a especially dynamic. the coach's wife of a coach who's like if you believe the stories is like oh if he loses the state championship game he might get fired yeah they right. had four right. signs move. out there and she just sat there like she didn't yeah. say a word I yeah just, i love like the she had moments where it was like when she did you're like oh this is great like when they're watching <laughs> this carter, is awesome when right. they're watching carter and she's like oh they're pretty think about alaska like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right that, that was, was like thing. one of the best lines in the whole movie <laughs> she had like a couple of moments and yeah. her moments were really good right. yeah, but right. then it was just like there were just so few and far between that i felt I felt unfulfilled by her character when I really thought that would have been a really interesting right. uh, thing to flesh out. And, and obviously there. then, you know, they do it really in the show. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, that's that's where they're She's like, okay, the this is this show. is like yeah. the dynamic in the show. So mm-hmm. I think that at least Peter Berg recognized yeah. that. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for me, I would go, I think that, yeah, Billingsley's dad is obviously like the clear, easy answer. <sighs> just because, But he was... Hate that uh, dude. But yeah, he, like, that was the point of his character. Right. So for I sure, for really sure. No, he, that, he played it but, very uh, well. No, I'm telling you, the car salesman, that guy just ticked me off. I <laughs> yeah. could not stand the know-it-all, Mr. Oh, big wig, we're going to play politics, and yeah. it's high school... I, God, I can't stand. And I love. I, I will say, I love that they just continue that strand for the show. Yeah, like, that is Buddy Garrity's entire yeah. character yeah. for like yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. stretch of the no, show. That, <laughs> that crap. Oh, that annoys it's me. It's great. Um. Okay. Up next, we have how was the 
realness of the football. Yeah. I'm gonna, let's turn it yeah, over to our, our, okay. our, our experts. So I thought – I seriously think that the Permian, the state championship game might be the most well-paced shot football game we've seen on camera because here's why. Mm-hmm. They Obviously, like, you have the music. You have the – you know, it's all the, all the cliched stuff. But when you talk about the flow of the game, I feel like we've – you watch that game on film. I feel like every one of us has seen that game whether it's high school or college, you see a clearly overmatched team slowly start to use small little moments to get themselves into it. When you looked at what what changed when it came to Permian kind of flipping the switch, it wasn't like, oh, they started manning up to this team that's bigger than them. It was like a kickoff return, mm-hmm. right? It was a, a fumble, a pitch, uh, uh, intercepted pitch mm-hmm. by Chavez. It was a quarterback, uh, uh, a running back pass to the quarterback. Like it was these random things pulled out that was, and it was one defensive stop, right? That one big stop on fourth and one, uh, little moments like that. Other than that, they were absolutely overmatched. But it was those little, small, little moments mm-hmm. that they used to get back into the game. And that's why I think that last sequence really frustrates me. Because, again, it was, <laughs> right. it was these little moments of, like, when we talk about underdog matchups, it's like you need everything to go right. Mm-hmm. And, like, they did. And, and you need to call all the, all the, all the different play, trick plays you have, all this stuff. Um, you know, running the ball, like a, it was a draw play on like third and long, like things like that, like little moments like that where you're like, oh, right, that's what needs to happen for mm-hmm. this team to be able to beat a team like this or compete with a team like this. And I thought that's basically what it was. Um, Cause what was the other one? Uh, Ivory Christian's interception. Like uh-huh. he, he fakes a blitz, pulls back, yeah. you know, he gets a short, he uh, uh, drops in the coverage for zone and gets a, gets an interception, like little things like that where you're like, oh, right, that's the kind of stuff that needs to go your way for them. And not so... That's that was the the kind of the magnum opus of that mm-hmm. movie, but like I thought, uh, that perfectly summarized what I loved about it was that, especially coming off the heels of at the time I think remember the Titans and the replacements were the movies after that, and obviously those I don't think those no. are very accurate no, no, depictions no, 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 at all no, of no, on field no, no, football. No, no. No. So coming off of the heels of those in the context of when it was made, I thought this was a flaw as far as the on field eleven on eleven stuff. Mm-hmm. I thought you could I don't I don't think it's been done better since. I thought it was spectacular. Mm. Uh, I think I I tend to I I didn't w- when you first said I think it's the best like football scenes in a movie ever. Mm. Like I I think my initial reaction was like oh wow hey let's mm. pop the brakes. But now that I think about it, like it really I'm is. I'm struggling to come up with one that I enjoyed more. And and really. The reason, guys, when you do filmmaking, the reason they do like the real close zoom is because it's, it's it. hard <laughs> to make. 11, 22 guys do something. But there was a shot, I think it was at Ratliff, maybe during the Midland League game, it's like a drone shot, basically, yeah. <laughs> where they show all 22, and it just looks like a football play. Yeah, you're right. watching film. Right. Like you're yeah. watching film. I was like, that is spectacular. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the only the only thing about the football that, that bothered me is everyone is always bleeding from the face all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's yeah. face You is have the face bleeding. mask. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, for a Every, reason. Nobody's face ever doesn't bleed. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> just, like, at least like when Winchell bleeds, they show that his helmet came off and that I kicked him right, in the chest. Right, right, right. Yeah. So like, he's actually, but like, yeah. There's everyone else just has like gashes <laughs> on him. Yeah. I was like, wait, what? Yeah. No, uh, but other than that, oh, yeah, I thought, I thought it was spectacular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that they did a good job of like, Again, just getting them to hold the football pretty right. Mm-hmm. I think that obviously, like except for the, except for uh, Billingsley, oh, oh, yeah. he can't yeah. hold the football. Yes, 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 he can with duct tape around his hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, although I did appreciate when uh, I think that during Booby's first touchdown run, he just had the ball like this. Like, oh, yeah, just, no, just just, like he, he just didn't care. <laughs> but obviously, like he's you know breaking away, whatever. Uh, you know, I thought that like like Mike threw the football and it looked pretty convincing. Mm-hmm. Like I thought that no, I mean I just thought that the way that they were set up was right. L- like you said, I mean they had a lot of shots where it was you know, more than one or two people, because that's, that's how it tends to be, right? Is like, it'll be like, oh, you know, we'll, we'll get two guys and just shoot that. But, you know, they, they kind of showed all this stuff around it, which I think they did a really good job of. Um, and, and I think that it was nice, too, that they didn't overdo the amount of football they put in it, too. Yeah, that's yeah. Like, because, uh, I mean, some movies, it's just like, okay, you're showing a montage of every game. Yeah. Like, you don't really need to do that. There was, okay, during, like, one of the first practices, they... Um, they run like a, a halfback pass where it's like they toss yeah. the ball to Booby and then yeah. Booby drops a freaking dime <laughs> yeah. and like, he can throw oh, like yeah. 50 yeah. yards. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like unbelievable pass. But then here's something that bothered me. I think it was the first game 
they're cruising towards a win, and they dial that up. Yeah. And I'm going like, <laughs> you can't you're going to put film? that on film that in on week film? one can't when you're up 35 to nothing? Yep. <laughs> like, that was the one thing. Like, I, I made it. I was like, wait a second. What are you doing? Uh, but, yeah, I thought it was – I thought the football was great. The uh, the one thing that, yeah, got me – there were two things. One, the numbers of the jerseys were just not – in Obviously, players can wear what jerseys they want, but they weren't super accurate. Like Mike had a really high mm. quarterback number. Well, he was he was Shea had, Patterson, yeah. number twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I think Mike Winchell a, actually had that number. Did he really? I believe so. Okay. so I believe. Then, yeah. yeah, that's like I said. I figured it could go either way, but it was just a little. There was a defensive lineman that they showed in the first play of the state championship game that got an unbelievable sack, and he stood up and was like four foot tall, wearing number four, like a scrappy <laughs> young player, as you might describe yeah. him. And it was just like. Yeah. Okay, that one <laughs> no, might be a little bit different. Like. There were – so when they got to the state championship game, yeah, they definitely did – like, I thought it was so realistic, mm-hmm. but they definitely turned the, like – I think it was to, to, to give you the sense of the intensity, the intense sense of, mm-hmm. like, the big hits. There was, like, this montage in the second – that third oh, yeah. quarter, yeah. right? Yeah. Where yeah. Flying yeah. out of the screen. Where there <laughs> are yeah, – Yeah, one guy just <laughs> – Right, like, right, like right. four in a row, guys get straight up jacked yeah. up. Yeah. And it's like, okay, like I buy there are big hits in this game. And yeah. I get what you're trying to do. But right. it's like they, they definitely crank that thing up to 11. The yeah, one right. other thing, too, the two run plays with 42 seconds left in yeah. the state championship. Yeah. What? That's some guts, well, man. One time out. That's yeah. some guts. Like, uh, I get the first one, not the second. a little unrealistic. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. first one makes right. sense. But two Especially when you're backed up a little bit. Yes. Like, why aren't you throwing the ball? I mean, right. again, that's what I'm also well, talking about with, like, Winchill, like, never being portrayed as ever throwing the ball well, ever. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and on know? the second one, they had Billingsley go back after dislocating his shoulder and go be the running back. So yeah. it's like, right. why aren't you just going to throw yeah. it? And then also, <laughs> where's then, Chris Comer? <laughs> yeah, where's <laughs> – uh, No, because he, he was knocked out. Remember, because oh, that was yeah. when he walked yeah. to the wrong sideline. Yeah, he walked oh. to the wrong sideline and got beat up by the cheerleaders. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then, by the way, speaking of wandering on, uh, wandering onto the field, uh, who let drunk Tim McGraw on the field after the game? <laughs> that, yep, that's that's a mistake. I've got to – You're like, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, here comes yeah. this. Here comes this guy reeking of booze <laughs> onto the onto the the, the Astrodome. But yep. uh, in any case, no. Overall, the, the realness of the realness of football was the reality good. of the football. It was, it was good. The reality of the football. Uh, thumbs up. Thumbs yes. up. Yes. All right. Um, up next, uh, Shahan. I know you can participate in this one. I think yes. is what you said. Uh, wife thoughts. Hashtag wife thoughts. Hashtag <laughs> wife thoughts. What were the wife's thoughts? Well, uh, you know, I'll start as a hashtag wife guy. Um, so. <laughs> You know, so so <laughs> perfect. <laughs> so my wife isn't a huge football fan. Um, you know, she generally enjoyed the movie. Uh, so some of the some of the things that she brought up, uh, she couldn't believe that that people actually put moving signs on coaches' lawns. Like she could not mm-hmm. believe yeah. that. And I'm like, yeah, no, that was like no, a real, I bought it. That, yeah. That's a yeah, real no, thing that actually happened that they mm-hmm. they wrote about in the book. Yeah. Like, they were in the state semis the year before, and they yeah, still were yeah. like, now nah, you can get out of town now. It's crazy. We haven't won since 84. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, it's right. It's been four years since we won <laughs> a state championship. You're yeah. out of here. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I, I think that actually, you know, one of the things that she said that was kind of interesting is, like, are we supposed to, like, feel good or bad for them? Like, because, you know, obviously it's such a big thing, like, to be able to accomplish all that, but it's also just the amount of pressure on those kids, mm-hmm. I think, was something that was just, like, mm-hmm. she could not believe. You yeah. know, that, that people were, like, just accosting them at just random places, and they're just, like, high school kids. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, again, that's that's part of this whole deal, you know? That's, like, I'm sure it, like, ish, I bet you are sitting there going, like, uh-huh, yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, no. Like, yeah, you know, it's maybe a little yeah. bit yeah. exaggerated, but not that much. Well, and, and, you know, so I was, I was, like, trying to tell her, too, you know, that's, that's sort of – what's beautiful and terrible about high school football, right? Is that like, it is such an incredible game. It's so much tension. It's like such an incredible experience, but yeah, you know, there for so many people, it is it, Yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, this is the thing you look at, uh, at Billingsley's dad. I mean, like he literally did that and it, it's over, right? Yeah. Like, and that's what that character is trying to portray, obviously. Or yeah. the one that meets him at the, uh, at the burger joint. He's like, you know, get you one of these, right? right. Babies, yeah. babies and memories, right? That's <laughs> literally, <laughs> that's to them. That's right. literally all it is. Yeah. Right. Babies yeah. and memories. And, and they, you know, they want to recapture yeah. that glory and, and that's, or see it perceived in someone else. Mm-hmm. And that's one of those things that I think they did a good job of 
in subtle ways of, of trying to portray that. Again, I, I think that at times they did it in ways that maybe people who aren't us would understand. Yeah. But uh, but I think that they did a good job of trying to subtly do There that was stuff. a line, they were at like the, I guess the drive-in or the diner or whatever it was where they were sitting outside and eating and uh, like early in the movie and like the guy comes up and says, hey, there's a party over at yeah. Santos house. And then the guy goes, isn't that <laughs> guy 35? <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> <"Tell> <laughs> you're drinking, <laughs> you're drinking. <laughs> like man, I, yeah, like I, yeah. I felt that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. And We're gonna get wasted. <laughs> just like off. Well, no, and and it was funny because because a lot of the things because again, I mean, since I I knew the story too, like obviously I was reacting differently to different things. Like she was like, "Man, I hate booby," and I'm like, "Yeah," because I obviously I know what yeah. happens. To, to, yeah, to yeah definitely root against him. Yeah, buy a lot of stock in hating him. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, because I was more open about hating Charles Billingsley because right. like mm-hmm. you know I'm like, yeah, I mean he's supposed to suck too, and like. You know, nothing per se extra bad happens to him after right. the movie. Right. So it was kind of interesting to kind of also get somebody who has, doesn't know the story's perspective mm-hmm. on yeah. that, too, I think. All right. Uh, my wife went to bed early, so she <laughs> yeah. did not watch the movie. Oh, so this was just uh, Sean's wife's time. No, no, no. no. Quinn participated. My, my oh, boyfriend, okay. He participated oh, okay. in Your a Your beautiful wife. Here we go. Wife, wife thoughts. thoughts. Boy wife thoughts. Uh, wife thoughts from Quinn. <laughs> wife thoughts from Quinn. Um, so Quinn works in athletics as a, a facilities guy Mm -hmm. um and it was funny because he started writing down a list like i have a list here on my phone of stuff he actually wrote (laughs) down Uh, he was super into this like he was pumped um but the things he actually said out loud were coming from a facilities perspective there was one shot where like right before the first game they turned on the stadium lights and he goes oh lights don't turn off on that fast (laughs) so that was one thing and then the other thing was is he got so mad when tim mcgraw made his way down onto the field he's like he doesn't even have a credential (laughs) why are we letting people down there without a credential who's who's letting this vagrant (laughs) onto the field he showed his ring man they're they're not gonna (laughs) stop him are you kidding me so that was the funny but but that's why he shouldn't have been let on at the uh, astrodome obviously he didn't have the ring exactly (laughs) So that was the funny thing, like how we look at the bracket perspective, like he was looking at it from like a world standpoint, lights don't turn on that fast. Uh, But some of the things he wrote down, I'll just give you a couple of them. He said, one, Billy Bob Thornton sounds like Hank Hill. That was a thought that he had. I got to go back and listen now. Yeah, there's a little damn it, Bobby. A little, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So he got that one. He doesn't have that tenor underneath, though. Yeah. Um, like he, he, he also said that the Bill Cosby jokes do not hold up. Thank you. So he noticed that <laughs> I one I wrote well. that down. I was like, oh, uh, <laughs> the Jell-O food and pop. <laughs> <laughs> when they did the, uh, the coin toss, uh, for the tiebreaker, he said, I don't know if I would eat at a place called Southside Market and Barbecue Incorporated. So that was. <laughs> Sir! <laughs> no. Sir, do you oh. not, have you not been. Uh, Qu- <laughs> Me and Quinn got to talk. Go Me and Quinn got to talk. He's not been to Elgin. Yeah. Aren't, aren't you Southside. Austin area? Oh You've never gosh. taken no. him to Elgin? Oh my gosh. Oh, By the way, it was weird that Incorporated was on the back of it. We got to talk, Quinn. Wait, um, did it happen at the Whataburger? What? Where did the coin toss actually happen? No, it happened in a, a truck stop. At a truck stop. No, truck, truck stop. stop. That's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And the last one is after the uh, the halftime speech that Coach Gaines gives, which, by the way, I think is also like a super, like probably one of my favorite like coaching speeches throughout a movie. It's really good. It, it was really good. After that, he just looks at me and he goes, I want Coach Gaines to do my eulogy. <laughs> and then that was <laughs> it. Well, so there's I, I like that it wasn't too wants Coach Billy. He wants Billy Bob Thornton as Coach Gaines. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah exactly. I'm, I, I just like that they didn't overdo it. Yeah. You know, because yeah. like that's the thing, man. They like everybody has to give this raw, raw speech, like this big, you know, fifteen minute speech, and it's like it was just like you know two minutes. You know, it was pretty, pretty concise, and they got everything across. Didn't yell too much. Like I, I, I liked it. I, I think, think it was and solid. you saw the inception of what eventually turned into clear eyes, full hearts can't lose. Oh, right, but right, right. It wasn't because he said clear eyes. And love in your heart. Yeah, and love and in so your heart. it was like eventually that turned into obviously Coach yeah. Taylor's saying. So you kind of saw the inceptions of that. Yeah. Uh, I'll try to get my wife to watch. She, I told her like I was like, hey, I'm, I gotta watch this movie for work, and she was like, oh, like I'm gonna go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds great. I was I'm like, like yeah. I think she wanted to, but she was like, I'm not gonna make you watch it twice. Yeah. Like, I would. I don't know. I might watch it twice. Yeah. I, I might watch it with her. Speaking a little bit of a locale, I told you guys, but uh, my aunt's house was used in the movie for uh, Coach, uh, the Billingsley home. Uh, they actually let her keep. They actually let her keep the uh, the blinds uh, that were used. Oh! In the movie. <laughs> I, grew, I literally grew up a block from where they shot because you can see before they go into the house the morning after uh, the ring fiasco. They show the Manor Water Tower. It's mm-hmm. like a sweeping shot. Um, they show the Manor Water Tower because their house is literally right under the Manor Water Tower. So yeah, the building's <laughs> home is my aunt's house. 
how do you scout that out? Like, how do you pick just a house? No idea. Well, That's <laughs> Peter Bur- well this one per- looks good. Pulled Peter, over. Peter Burke's from Austin, right? I don't think. Do I, he's Austin born ties? in New York. I'm going to say he has Austin ties, but he was born in like New yeah, York. Yeah, I was going to say like, because I mean, obviously, like we did uh, Friday Night Lights TV show and there's yeah. a, lot a lot of Austin, Austin looking, yeah. there. Right, right, right. right. Florida, obviously. Yeah, right, a lot of right, Florida, right. So yeah. maybe he just lives here now. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe you just want to do it locally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to stay in a hotel. It's fine. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you to Quinn and Bargavi for Wife Thoughts. Yes. Our last and final category here will be the overall ratings. We got a five stars. Okay. Out of five stars, what are you going to give this movie? Now, I want to be clear. Uh-huh. Let's let's clarify something. Yeah. This is graded on a football movie scale. Okay. okay we yes. are not comparing this. Ooh, okay, that we're, changes We're things. not comparing this to Citizen Kane. Right. Okay, because that's not, well. like, we're not comparing <laughs> this to Under the to Silver Parasites. Lake. Right, exactly. Right. We're, we're going to. <laughs> Which I finally saw, by the way. <sighs> the fantastic. Good. It's really good. Oh, Fantastic. Okay, I to see that. That'll be our next football movie. <laughs> Parasite, the Korean film. Um, okay. And then it'll be Shin Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, on oh, a football man. movie scale. Yeah. yeah. And this is tough, right? Because we're going to be doing this uh, five or six more mm-hmm. times. So, mm-hmm. you, you don't want to overcook it. Yeah. I'm giving it four stars. Okay. I'm giving it four stars. There are a couple of things, as I mentioned, that took me out of it a little bit. I maybe that's just a me problem mm-hmm. as the Texas high school yeah. football guy. But overall, this is very clearly one of the better football movies out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not perfect, but overall, for a football movie, I thought that this was uh, very, very good. It's you know, if you were giving it a grade, it would be an A minus. But I would say uh, uh, this is a four star movie, closer to a five than a three. So Wait, I'll say okay. four. Oh, okay, I got to clarify that too, just because yeah. yeah, we didn't clarify. Or do we have to give it like? Whole stars, or can there? No, you can give a half. You can give yeah, a half give stars. Half it, stars. Yeah, okay. it, I'll still stick with four stars, but it is, right, yeah. uh, it is, it is this close to four and a half. Yeah. It is, it, it, it oh. might be four and a half. <laughs> I'm gonna give it four and a half stars. Okay, four and a half stars is mine. So there's still room to grow. Yeah, but this was a this was a very good movie. It was mm-hmm. very enjoyable. I'm gonna go with four and a half as well. I think it's a solid four and a half for me nearing that perfect but obviously you know it's hard to make a perfect football movie because mm-hmm. you're making some sacrifices for general audiences things of that nature um obviously the the runtime hurts a little bit uh, uh, with certain characters not being fleshed out but i i still think this is the closest thing to a perfect football movie mm. with everything that's involved that we've seen especially when you consider basically any other movie that uses football as its main crux or main hook i just don't think we've seen the total package of everything that this movie gave so i'm going with a solid firm for four, uh, four and a half so this is tough for me so i the funny thing about this is one again like i've mentioned like five times at this point it, th- my experience with this movie was very shaped by reading the book no first. somebody knows how to read <laughs> i understand. it's like the la- only book i've read in the last year but <laughs> but i did read it i did read it um you know and so uh Honestly, for me, one of the biggest takeaways was just that I wish that I had more, you yeah. know, like, and which, which like ref- maybe reflects not as well on the movie, but it reflects really well on the movie in another sense, mm-hmm. you know, that like it was well done and I wanted to see them do it more. And, and obviously they did that to an extent in the TV show and obviously did a great job. Yeah. Um, so I'd give, I think I'd give this about a solid four. Um, I think that uh, for me, it's probably nearing more a 3.5 than a, than a 4.5. But, but I mean, I think it was a solid four on the football movie scale. Um, again, I mean, it was a little, uh, like, parts were predictable. Like, it, it wasn't, like, groundbreaking in any yeah. sort of way. You know, it wasn't, like, but, but obviously that's just sports movies, right? Yeah. Like, again, if we were grading it on the movie scale, it would be a little lower for me, obviously. But, like, you know, they... I think they did the story well. I like that it wasn't just the "Hey, yeah, we won at the end." You know, I think that 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 in itself is its own strength. If they, had, if they, had, I'll, I'll say this: if they had changed the ending, if right. he had scored on that final <laughs> and they play, won the state I, title, I, I, I would have been pretty mad. I, yeah, I would have. I they think I would have been like legit yeah. angry. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm I'm glad that they held true. To that. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm glad that they did that. I, I mean, again, there were just little things that were just distracting for me. I, I'd say, mm-hmm. um, you know, nothing painful by right. any means but but just little things where it was just like well, well one for me that that i mentioned pre-show is like man i i know that you want it to be a feel-good story but this you know this community threw away booby miles mm-hmm. you know like mm-hmm. and the idea that they're like all right he's coming with us on the bus and is excited and we're embracing him come on you know like mm-hmm. stuff like that it's just like you're you're kind of whitewashing the story a little bit sure. but um but you know i think that they did a, a decent job with with the two hours that they're given to tell some of the negative sides of the story with the positive sides. And I think, you know, when you're looking for a sports movie, you're just looking for a full picture. 
I'm glad that, yeah, the reason I asked about the, if we were doing half stars or whole stars was because I, last night had already written down 4.5. I mm -hmm. think that I agree with Ish. I have always loved this movie. I think that it's, it's just, yeah, it's very well told. Um, it's realistic. Um, and yeah, I just, I, I really, really do enjoy this movie. I think that it's good. And I think that that's part of the reason why I haven't watched the TV show. Like all of my roommates love the, the TV show and I just have it because I don't know, I like I just love the movie so much. Mm -hmm. I feel like I don't need it to be dragged on and extended. Like, I I don't know. Maybe I need to sit down and watch it. But <laughs> I, I feel like it's great the, the way that it is. And it kind of captures everything in a very good time limit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, have you guys both read the book and watched the TV show, too? Yeah. So I know. So, yes. Yeah, so so there are some character tangent, you know, tangent, mm -hmm. uh, uh, some characters that are strung over into the show. Like Mike Wenchel is kind of the Mike uh, Matt yeah, Saracen yeah, yeah. role. Uh, um, Don Billingsley is pretty similar to Don Billingsley is, bas is basically Tim Riggins. Right. Um, uh, Booby Miles is kind of divided into two yeah. because uh, he's all he's he's Jason Street, but he's also um, I forgot the running back. Smash, uh, Smash, Smash, Smash. So there's like he's kind of divided into right. two. Um, it, it, it's it's I can see where people would prefer the. Uh, let's put it this way: I'm not sure if there's people that love both. Love both the TV and movie. I think you're either. I think you're in either. I think you can be okay with it or like like the movie. With it, yeah. But I think there are people that love either. I'm one. I'm someone that loves the movie, and have annoyances with the show. And I honestly feel like I'm it's closer which to one that you watch too. first. It, I th it, like it probably has something to do with what you watch first. Yeah, first. Yeah, that's funny because I I would disagree. Oh, that's because, true. I because I watched backwards. this was the first time watching the movie. That's I had true. seen the that's show true. and read right. the book, and I think the movie is. Clearly better, mm -hmm. clearly yeah. superior to the TV show. But you weren't a big fan of the TV show, right? I was lukewarm on the TV. Yeah, show. yeah. I, I'd say that for me, because because well, you know, when you when you try to rank it, I mean, I think the the books at the top for me, and like I think that the TV show did more good things than the movie, mm -hmm. but it also did more bad things than the movie, obviously too. Like like the movie kind of skimmed, you know, a good level, mm -hmm. right? Like like it hit a lot of the right chords. It missed, obviously, some of the things that I think were most interesting, too. Like, again, I mean, I want to hear more about Booby. Like, I know that you can't touch on this because this is a whole other movie, but, man, the fact that they didn't even touch on anything about that Carter team, like, mm -hmm. at all, yeah. that kind of – I mean, you know, and what do you do? Like, you just I, need a, well, the thing is you just need a villain. Right, 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 yeah. right. right. But, like, for example, man, I, I even thought it was kind of funny the way that the, uh, that the Carter team was portrayed because they were always sort of like, we have the rebellious – over the top players, but they made the coach the rebellious, over the top, like sort yeah. of intimidating mm -hmm. guy, which mm -hmm. I was a little surprised by. Um, I want to give a very small um, honorable mention for MVP mm -hmm. to Explosions in the Sky. <laughs> well, uh, the, I thought the score, <laughs> yeah, and it's the really music good. Was really good. So Explosions in the Sky gets a lot of the obviously gets a lot of the credit because uh, I believe they also went to do the, the show music as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Do you guys? Uh, there's something about the music in this that I wanted to. I wanted to see if you guys hinted on, or you guys caught on. Did you guys notice the music that was used for Booby and uh, uh, Carter? No. Public Enemy. Was it really? Yes, because every single scene, <clears throat> it wasn't just hip hop. Because like in the quote unquote white party at Odessa, mm -hmm. like they were playing oh, like yeah. Run DMC and things like that. Right, but right. specifically for Booby, you go back and watch that first game. It's Bring the Noise. Mm -hmm. right? That's Thanks. right. How low can you go? Yeah. Uh, he has Terminator X written on his towel, which mm -hmm. for those that don't know, Terminator X is the DJ for Public Enemy. Mm. Uh, there is uh, when Carter is... Um, oh, God. Uh, I think like when they introduce him and say, the team that they're going to have to run into eventually... No, no, is, no, no. There was, it, uh, not then? it was not that scene. It was the first play when Ma uh, Mike uh, Wenchel gets hit in the mm -hmm. end zone for his safety. It's uh, Welcome to the Terror Dome. And like there, <laughs> if you know the lyrics to those songs, if you're familiar with Public Enemy... I thought that was a very smart and subtle way because Welcome to the Terror Dome is about Welcome to the 90s where black culture takes over, mm -hmm. right? And what did Dallas Carter embody in a lot of ways was black culture, mm -hmm. right? Oh, for sure. And, and so, like, when opening with that song in the state championship game, uh, using Booby as, like, that, that like, uh, uh, the outspoken, very charged black personality – Public Enemy using that for that soundtrack. Right. Uh, the black part when they transition from the to the more black party with Booby and Chris Comer in the high school, I believe it's um, uh, I can't remember exactly, but it's another Public Enemy song there. Mm -hmm. And so like using those in particular for Booby and for Dallas Carter, I thought was so smart. Well, Obviously, mm -hmm. Explosions in the Sky gets a lot of the credit because they do a lot of the beautiful scene setting stuff. That's right. super interesting. I thought, yeah. So well, and then like even going back to to, to Booby is. Um, when he's talking, like they're like one of the first times. We, in fact, it might be the first time we meet him. Mm 
uh, he's talking about his Nikes. Yeah, right? he's yeah, talking right, about right. like, no, I'm gonna be out there in my in black in, Nikes. In my black that's Nikes. Comer's kind of coloring. Yeah, he's coloring his <laughs> shoes. White like, Adidas black. Yeah, yeah it was, was like, awesome. it, like it was it was little touches like that. It was yeah. a lot of show don't tell in this movie, yeah. Yeah. and I appreciated that. And I did not catch the Public Enemy thing. That's really yeah, interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So overall, I think we liked it. Yeah, we definitely yeah. liked okay. it. Okay. There you go. Uh, thanks for doing this, guys. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Uh, and now. Uh, right after this, we're going to, uh, if you're watching this right now, we're going to tweet out uh, a uh, at DCTF a, a new poll with four different movies up. Uh, you can choose our fate. Uh, I think that, that terrifies what, me. What, 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 what are the four? We don't know yet. Okay. Well, we're Sorry. recording this All early. Right. All yeah. right. So we'll, we'll run it back. We'll, we'll, so, but we'll, there will definitely be some like good football movies mm-hmm. and some uh, <laughs> other football <laughs> movies. So let's choose the good ones. Yeah, come on, guys. <laughs> Help right? out your friends. We're going to do that. Please. We're your friends. Like, this was an enjoyable experience, but we also got to choose this. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so I'm really worried when we give it to you you people. <laughs> well, let, let's review how realistic the football is in The Water Boy. Oh, God. <laughs> I would not Savages. be opposed to watching The Water Boy. I'm just going to go ahead movie. and throw yeah. that just one every, out there. Every oh, Adam Sandler football mom. movie <laughs> just slaps the ball out. This could be a this this may be a mistake. It's gonna be a long off season. We're gonna we're gonna get this vote and then we're gonna go. We're not doing that again yep. next month. <laughs> that <laughs> that is going to do it for us. Thank you for spending a little bit of your day with us. Follow us on Twitter at DCTF. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Dave Campbell's. Follow us on Instagram, Instagram.com slash Dave Campbell's, and of course see us at TexasFootball.com for Ashley Pickle, Shahan J. Raja, and Ishmael Johnson. I'm Greg Tepper. Vince Young, please get your player of the year trophy. Monday, 9 30 a.m. The UIL realignment special here on Texas Football Today.